Hi, this is Justin Kelly from 3DB Labs, and today I quickly wanted to go over some of the new ELINT capability that we've added in Scepter over the past few months. So you've seen Scepter before probably, and you've seen all the various D mods, linear D mods, bit breakout, all very comms centric. And while we have created PDWs <clears throat> previously, what we've added recently is the way in which we display and render that PDW data so that an ELINT analyst can quickly dive down, filter out, and extract the signal that they want in the PDW data, and then also, furthermore, queue up the raw data based on that selection in the, pre -D or in the PDW data. So in my screen, I have the spectrum spectrogram, but it's these plots down below that are new that I want to kind of hone in on today. So on the left-hand side here, I have a scattergram where I am plotting the received pulse duration versus frequency, and that is changeable to plot any metric versus another that we are calculating. I have a time-time raster here, which Albeit right now, it doesn't look like much, but I'll get into that in a second. This is a very busy, busy band. That's why I chose the signal to demonstrate that. Um, pulse amplitude, pulse frequency, and then PRI. Other things you can plot are uh, PRF, pulse duration, etc. Okay, so traditionally, the problem that one would have when looking at a radar in a busy band like this would be that the, the DTOA between every pulse that is received in the band, there's no way to distinguish between, say, this radar here or this radar, or in that radar, and that radar. So your PRI field looks like this. So what we've done is added a filtering capability. So if I filter on those, I've isolated, kind of trickles down, and now I can see just that signal in the pulse amplitude in the frequency plot. And you can see I've recalculated my DTOAs based on my filtered pulse rate or my filtered pulses. So if I zoom in here, pretty tight, I can S click. That's going to align my time time raster here. And you'll see that that changed here as well. And I can zoom in. I can do a two point click align. And now I've rastered up my data. If I want to now measure this uh, in the pre D domain, let's say I want to make an exact measurement, I can go in here and I can hover over these and now I've queued up the pre-D data for that instant. Now I can add multiple different filters as well and I can also change what I color by. So right now I'm colored by frequency. I could color by duration and I could say filter out these pulses here and zoom in here. Now I can see that that radar is actually sweeping in frequency there. And now hone in on that and actually see that it's a BPSK signal and then measure my minimum bit uh, and what my whether or not it's a Barker code or not a Barker code. All the same things we've been able to do in Scepter before are still there. So if you want to filter on a signal of interest and then be able to <coughs> take those pulse measurements and do statistical analysis on them via the pulse capture function, you can still do that. You can export these PW files as a type 6000 file, uh, which is a platinum file and is compatible with existing 
software such as Marquez, um, Willow, Aspen. But if you're trying to do it real time, you really can hone in and do a lot with radar signals now that you previously couldn't. So again, this has just been a very high level brief overview of some of the new ELAC capability that we've added. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on what we've done, please feel free to email us at info at 3db-labs.com. Thanks.